Hi guys, I'm Darren, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the new FreeSky Archer R6 receiver. Right, so before we take a look, I'd just like to ask if you do find this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It will help for other people find information on this receiver. So this i've bought out my own money and i'm using it to replace the receiver that's currently in my max thrust riot which you may have seen uh the current sensor video so i needed this for the smart port at the moment it's got a d4r2 in it which is no good so that's going to go into something else because it's still a good receiver so um i've had the different iterations i guess on accst protocol there was first the x4r and the x4r sb so i've had a couple of s4r xbs and they, they were pretty decent receivers but then they stepped up to the rx4r and rx6r which were tiny in comparison to the originals so the rx6 the rx4r was probably about that sort of size and then the rx6 which i i bought was tiny when when you soldered on the pins it pretty much doubled the size of a receiver so that worked on accst and you can also flash access on it this is one of the new access only receivers so i thought i'd take take a look so it's a standard free sky affair we once again get our a5 manual with all the binding procedures on high speed servos so if you're using digital servos you can up the uh, refresh rate so let's take a quick look while we're here at what it supports so we have six pwm channels so you have one to five on the front and then number six is on the back it supports s bus up to 24 channels uh, it supports smart port, which is you know the reason why I got it. It also has the analog uh, telemetry too. So I'm going to carry on using the analog uh, battery sensor that I've got in the model at the moment. It's got a greater than two kilometer range, uh, operating voltage of 3.5 to 10 volts. So if you've got high volt servos, you can power the receiver straight through as you would for those servos. There's no problem whatsoever um and it's a yeah 2.4 gigahertz it also also does support over the air updates which is a really cool feature it's got s bus in and out so it supports redundancy it can run f port and it has the valid frame rate which if you're used to crossfire is uh basically the same as the link quality so we we have not only rssi but we also now have vfr to see how strong and how stable our link is so let's take a look what we get so we get these two pins or cables here so this lead here is going to be really useful they've already got a breakout for the smart port so i can plug that directly into my um, smart port sensors and it will work straight off so the other cables that we have are this blue one on the end is s bus in so you connect that to the S-Bus out on another receiver for redundancy. The white one here is the S-Bus out. So if you wanted to connect it to a flight controller or um, another receiver, if you're using this for redundancy. And the green one is the A2, so the analog sensor in. So I'm using this for a voltage sensor, which when I'm doing the current stuff, I don't actually need. So I may just use that one for the voltage sensor eventually. But anyway, you get everything that you need. So the receiver itself is a standard uh, diversity free sky receiver. It's actually in a plastic case. Usually this sort of size, they just they always traditionally were just cardboard. So the button is actually like a little flap, I think. Yeah, that is the bind button. It's just a really small flap of plastic. If I can get it to focus. So yeah, we can see it here. You've got this little flap here is actually the bind button or the, the register button, I should say, with access. Then you have the uh, pad or the connector up here, which has got your smart port A2 S bus out and S bus in. 
obviously the five PWM and on the back you have the six. So it's a really nice, neat little unit. It's, it's, it's just as compact as the older RX6R, maybe slightly longer. It's still, it's a very small 2.4 uh, receiver when you're looking at traditional planes. <laughs> so um, let's get it bound up and take a look. Right, so I've got the receiver. It's just a switch with a battery on the end and a beck. So uh, let's get into it. So this is going to be my riot. So I've already got the model. So let's enter the menu and let's get it bound up. So we want our internal module. We want it on access. I'm going to leave it on receiver number three and then let's set it to register. So we want to click the register button. Now what we do is we hold in this little button here turn on the receiver and it's popped up so what i'm actually going to do is name it r6 riot and we just press enter to complete the operation sorry if the screen's a bit bright Let's see if we can get it that's better all right so registration okay enter so what we need to do now is turn off the receiver and now we actually bind it so we just go to bind and then we just turn it on we don't need to press the button select our r6 riot receiver bind successful and we're all done and we can set a, a fail safe so i usually do custom and it's already set up because i've imported the model so usually i just set that to zero so i center all the channels other than the throttle which i bring down ah it's trim of course so that's our receiver set the other thing that we need to do is have a look at the telemetry so these values are wrong because it's uh an archer access receiver they should actually be 35 and 32 and now what we can do is i'm going to delete these sensors because they are um, from the old system and then discover new sensors and we've got our a2 for some reason it's not actually connected but we've got rssi which is our standard rssi our rx battery which it gets from here and the vfr which is the link quality so i figured for completeness i'll actually show the over the air update and then we can have a look at the options that it may have added uh, on the actual receiver itself in the future i'll be a bit less crap and i'll actually put the firmware on the transmitter at the start um, but anyway so we go into the system menu and then you page through until you get to your SD card folder and you want to choose firmware. Now on yours, you may just have a list of firmware. It depends on how you organize it, but I've got mine in receivers and then the actual receiver itself. So then what we do is we long hold and we choose flash RX by internal over the air. And now what we need to do is switch the receiver on. So if you've got it switched on to begin with, turn it off. And then we just choose the R6 Riot, which is the name we gave this receiver click OK. It's actually saying that it's the correct firmware version. Oh, sorry, it's given the name of the firmware that we're updating to, and then it does the overview update. So let's fast forward. So now we're done. We just press enter. But there we go. We're all set up. We're ready to stick it in a plane and go flying. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Um, and thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Fly your models like you stole them. Bye-bye.